Hey friends, it's Eugene here. And today what I'm going to be doing is showing you a video from Jared Carter. And it was a little study that he did with Recon 3D and he was comparing it to his Leica RTC 360 scanner. Now, when it comes to accuracy with Recon 3D, it's an area that I've put a lot of emphasis on. It's something that I believe strongly in, in testing and validating and just trying to see where the app is useful in a number of different applications. On our website right now, you'll see that there are three published studies. And I know for a fact there are some more which are being worked on or that are currently submitted for peer review. But the three are, one is from Soren Kotner, one is from Seth Miller, it's an SAE paper, and there's another one that I did uh, with uh, Jiwa Lim and we looked at point-to-point -point measurements. And so it is important to understand what different ways and what are the different perspectives that people have on accuracy and what it means. And so a lot of people just, you know, think accuracy is about, you know, how tight the data is or whatever. And that is partly true, but you can do different types of analysis. And so, for example, one is looking at point to point measurements. So I can take two measurements, uh, one with a laser scanner or one with like a steel tape or something like that. And then I scan it with Recon 3D and I make a comparison and I look to see what the differences are. That's one way to do it. And you'll get one type of answer by doing it that way. Another way is to look at deviation analysis or cloud to cloud comparisons. And that's something that you can do inside of cloud compare. So you take one point cloud like Recon 3D, and then you take something that I would say is like a control or something you know that you're confident in. So if it's a Faro scanner, a Leica scanner, whatever it might be, and basically you put them together and then you do an analysis and we'll, they'll look for the point to point uh, deviations or differences between the two point clouds. So that's another way that you can do it. And one way is not necessarily right or wrong, but I think when you're looking at accuracy, you have to look at the totality of all the different ways you can look at uh, the error that are, that's incorporated into these scans. So without further ado, what I'm going to do is play a little video for you. It's a uh, part of a larger presentation that was made by Jared Carter from Origin Forensics. And it was something that he presented on the user group meeting that we had a little while ago. I've shortened it down to just a few minutes, but I think it's worthwhile looking at. Now, this is not a published study. It hasn't been published. It hasn't been peer reviewed, but this is something that Jared did on his own time and making some comparisons. And because it isn't published, I think it's important to get uh, this information out there. And so I'd like to post it and I'd like you to have a look and take it for what it's worth. Also, don't forget to have a look at the website. Make sure you look at the papers if you can get a hold of them. One of them, or actually two of them, are open source, so you can uh, click on them. The one from the SAE has to be purchased, so um, you know you may know somebody, or uh, maybe you know you're willing to spend the money to look at it. Hopefully, you'll enjoy the video, or you can appreciate what he's done and the effort that he's put in. So, uh, thank you, Jared, and and thank you very much, everybody. So this is what the Recon 3D app is putting out. This is a quartering shot of our van. You can see you can get some, I can, I can tell you from having been there in the photos I showed you earlier that this is a nice, clean color representation. So this looks very much like what you are actually seeing. And here it is from the right rear corner. Uh, you will note that on when you get to the darker side, if you start on the lighter side and you come around to the darker side, it is gonna lighten up a, uh, a little bit on the darker side because of the exposure it sets when you're on the lighter side. Here's the RTC 360 output, and you can see because of the HDR imagery, the blacks are more gray and the white is, is white, um, but you're starting to see some more muted coloring of the blues and the yellows here. So you can really see the exposure difference between the two. And then here's the right rear quartering shot of the van. So uh, the Leica um, processing report, this is what we got out of the processing report from the RTC 360. Uh, we got a bundle error of one millimeter uh, 75% overlap, strength of 57% in the cloud to cloud was uh, one, one millimeter. So we got some really good results from the like RTC, RTC 360, which tells me that's a good, that gives me a good basis for comparison to the Recon 3D data. And then here, uh, I'm just going to show what I did was I 
these purple spheres that you're seeing are locations where I was going to take measurements between these various locations. So taking measurements between these checkerboards on the ground and then picking some points on the perimeter of the vehicle on the body panels to measure between in order to try to get as much information as I could as I could about what how to compare a given measurement in the RTC 360 data, which is here in the front, to the recon 3D data, 3D data, which is in the back here. There's another view of that. So you can see what that looks like. So what does the data look like? Uh, here's what the data looks like in comparison for discrete measurements. Our April tags distance that was set uh, as the scale for the recon 3D data was 6.1976 meters or 6,197.6 millimeters. Uh, the April tags distance that I measured in the RTC 360 data was 6.1987 meters or 6,198.7 millimeters, that gives me a 1.1 millimeter difference. So once I scaled the Recon 3D data uh, and said it was 244 inches was what I set it at, that converts to 6.1976 meters. I got an offset of 1.1 millimeters for the scaled distance uh, between the April tag targets. As you can see, the error, uh, in absolute terms or just generally is, a un, is about five millimeters. And then the, ab, the absolute error is under 1%. It's under 0.2% actually. So really good overall error, which I thought was pretty impressive considering the cost of both scanning methods. To put some more meat on the bone, so to speak, I also did a alignment of the Recon 3D to, 3D data with the RTC 360 data, and then did a color map to show the offset of nearest neighbors. And you can see here that the red is about a 12 millimeter offset. Uh, the green is on the order of about a five millimeter offset. And then the blue down here is on the order of about a one millimeter offset. So you've got a lot of blue and green. One thing to note here is that a lot of the red areas are just areas where they're, you know, you've got some bleed from the different scans or some areas where there's not great overlap or you're not getting a lot of good data in those areas in general terms. So most of it's blue, most of it's green. So most of it's around, you know, under five millimeters, but certainly under a centimeter. Here's another view of that from the back right corner. And then just to put some additional meat on the bone, histogram plot of those previous visualizations, 95% of the data on those overlay on the on the overlays there uh, is under a, is under one centimeter. So you go to five millimeters, 81 to 82 percent of your data is under five millimeters. And then if you go to the, you know, down to the one millimeter where you're getting, you know, trying to get super accurate, about 20% of the data is going to be under one millimeter. So overall, I'd say that's, that's all pretty good in terms of a comparison. So there you have it, folks. Uh, as you can see, there were some interesting things that were said about the qualitative aspects and the quantitative aspects. So, for example, on the qualitative side, there was the color and how the color representation seems to be a little bit more realistic. And sometimes if you're using HDR or if you find yourself in a difficult situation, um, the cameras that are on the scanner sometimes are not always the best, but the phone camera quality seems to be pretty good and it helps with the color of the point cloud. In terms of accuracy, we're talking talking about, you know, errors on the order of a centimeter or two or three, it depends. And a lot of times technique matters. And so depending on the scale of the project, depending on the way that you scan or the uh, way that it was approached, it can have an impact on what it is that you're doing. And so if you're doing an extremely long scan, um, you would expect to have greater error, some drift and other things happening there. And if you're doing something smaller, maybe at higher resolution, just over the order of a couple few meters, then that's something different as well. You would expect to have smaller errors too. 
So uh, that's it in a nutshell. Again, if you want uh, some of the papers, head over to the website and go ahead and click on the links. Two of them are open source. One of them you have to purchase. So if you know somebody or you're willing to spend the money, you can go ahead and download the paper. Now we're going to be continuing on with accuracy studies. We have some more things in the work and in the future I'll be posting some more and presenting more in future user group meetings, training courses and conferences. So hopefully we'll see you there. Thanks so much everybody. See you soon. Bye bye.